How long have you lived here? 80 years. We came here in 1934. My mother and father and four children, of which I was the eldest. And I had three brothers. I went to school in Carlisle and Edinburgh. So I think, had there not been a war, we would have gone somewhere else. I don't know where, man. But I was born in Wales. And can I tell you something else? Yep. My mother is, came from Wales. She was born in Wales. My father is a Yorkshireman. I was born in Wales. The brother next to me was born in Wales. The next brother in Edinburgh and the next brother in Carlisle. Now, right round, we used to call them Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Wood and the three, four little sprinters. <laughs> That's a fine name, wasn't it? And there's only two of us left, myself and the brother that was born in Edinburgh. Were the brothers mean to you? Pardon? Were the brothers mean to you? My brothers mean to me? No. No, I think probably I was spoiled because I was the girl. Although they all... No, I... I know I, I used to take the two youngest out in the pram. And there were the old-fashioned prams in those, not the nice modern ones. Oh, the great deep bodies. And one was at the, that end and one was at that end. Because he was the heavier one. Because he would tip it up and mind it did tip up one day. And over they went. Anyway, they were all right. I hated pushing that pram. And they would sit outside and it was bitterly cold and their hands were frozen. Can we go in now? Because I wanted to read. Because I like books. No, 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 we can't go in yet. I didn't like want to go in because they like watching their other brother on his bicycle. So, um, what, kind, what was school like then? Well, it was an old girl's private school. But first of all, I went to James Gillespie's in Edinburgh. All right. And we lived away out in the suburbs at that time. And my, mo my mother used to take me, only went for half a day, first of all. We had to go on a tram into Princess Street. Right. Then we changed and had to get another train to get take me up to James Gillespie's. Eventually I did go for full time and my brother Stanley came with me as well so there was two of us going. So I think my mother spent most of her time on the trams. And then when we moved to Carlisle I went to James, uh, went to Brunswick House, which was an all-girls private school. And my brother next to me, he went to Grosvenor College. Now the next brother didn't speak until he was, oh, I don't know, three or, well, he didn't speak until he was about three, four or five. Ooh. My mother and father thought he was tongue-tied, so they had him at all the specialists. So it came for him to go to school. Nice cap, tie, blazer, lovely school bag, which you put on your back. You know, put your hands through it. He was giving it. But he went and he never spoke. When we had the Princess Princess Royal, Princess Anne here to New to Whitley Bay, and we had a, a do in the Spanish cities that was then, there we were all sitting. He got on his hind legs and was one of those who was giving the speech. I look at my mother, she looks at me, look at my father. Can't believe it. <laughs> and now, of course, oh, I don't even speak all over. He's treasurer of this, and I don't know what he isn't, but that's 
sisters aren't told. So you see, that's it. But I liked reading. <laughs> reading, and I, I mean, even today, I can, well, of course, you won't do that. I mean, I had to learn my tables. Do you have tables now? Mm -hmm. Oh, you still? Yeah, we do. One to twelve? Yeah. I can still do them. <laughs> twelve ones are twelve. <laughs> I can still do that. And then your uh, ABC. So, spelling. I like reading. <laughs> Geography. Oh, at one time I could tell you every country in Africa. Now they've all got different names and I don't know them. Oh. On long holidays, eight weeks, and we used to go to Wales to my grandmother's. So by the time my mother packed a great big trunk, <coughs> then she had what was like a big laundry basket because she had to put the Wellingtons in. <laughs> and the raincoats, the cricket bats, <laughs> the balls. <laughs> I don't know whether half of them were used, Mandy, because they were that busy down on the farm. Then one night, they decided they would have the tent in the field before the house and they'd sleep there. You can guess what happened. In the middle of the night, there was voices. Can we come in? Mother wasn't very pleased as she could. <laughs> I think the sheep calling and the uh, cows moving in the night, they wouldn't like that. If I know my brothers. What sort of games did you play? Well, I like reading, so I wasn't out a great deal. But my brothers, bicycle. I think they had the. I think if I remember rightly, it was a rally. I don't know whether they're about now. And um, there was hopscotch, hoops, skipping ropes. What else is there? There wasn't so much football in those days. But bicycles, yes. And of course, when we came to live here, of course, my brother's bicycles still. And of course, in the early days, well, we had the Empire Picture House where the used to be where they're going to build now at the bottom of um, the esplanade and then there was the picture house further on and then there was the playhouse well you could go on a saturday to the picture house for about a shilling because they had saturday matinees so they liked that or they were down on the rocks and we had a dog we had dogs first of all a labrador and then we had a Kerry Blue and they would make paper boats out, or little wooden boats and he had to go out on the rocks and bring them in but that's what they liked to do. The older one would get his bicycle and go out to, what is it, tram out along, you know, out Street and Sluice and those, the woods out there but he was quite sensible and then the war came. What was the war like? Well, to start with, these, well, these are new windows, but the original windows were all covered. Well, not when I say covered, it wasn't, but it was more in a pattern, you know, diamond patterns and square patterns. Brown paper, sticky paper, the kind you get today put over a box if you're sending a parcel instead of putting string. And this was all encased it all you know they were broken so that was the your house in those days then you had thick curtains in some cases they were black and i know we had to have a black one on over that inner door 
because we had a wooden door outside then, then the inner door had to be covered with a black curtain. So that when you went out, you had to pull the curtain behind you because you didn't dare have a light show because the warden would sure to be about, put out that light because the German planes. And at that time, I used to be traveling to Newcastle, West Jessamond, where was with Boots the Chemist, in West Jessamond. And in those days, it was electric trains. So there they were running. All of a sudden, the lights went out in air raid warden. And then, of course, it didn't stop him. And then you got to the station and you're making your way home in the dark. But then there was no cars or anything about. And of course, we didn't have an air raid shelter as such, because a lot of people had Anderson shelters. We have a cellar down below. So, a big mattress was taken down there, and that's where we went. With neighbours across the road, they used to come as well. The dog was terrified, so he was down there as well. So that's where you spent most nights. You'll be lucky if, the, if it went, there it went, there it warning, you know, all clear went in the week round, you know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, you could come upstairs and go to bed. Did your house, did this house get damaged in any way? Well, I, not so much, not building wise, but it affected a lot of the doors, if you know what I mean, the explosion sort of, they have to be seen to, but we didn't have any building damage done. We were lucky enough for that. Because when you consider that the bomb dropped just at the top of the road. You know when you go up Margaret Road and you know where Coble House is? Yeah. That's the nursing home. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look on the other side, on the corner opposite the co-op, there used to be a church there. A church and there was also where they kept, well, the trams and the buses. And there was also a school there on both sides of that road. Anyway, one afternoon, I know there was only myself and one brother in and the dog in. And this German aeroplane came swooping in. And I was in the other room. And I don't know what we were talking about, but the next thing is, Going past the window was a bomb. That's, I knew what it was when I saw it that size. I thought, well, it, it won't affect us. The next thing, there was an almighty crash and it has hit this church and the young man inside playing the organ was scared. So that's, you know, that's how near it was. So no doubt that's how everywhere was shook and upset. And then, of course, there was the time they dropped the landmines further along. We didn't go to bed that night. Oh, it's fed up with going to in and out and hopping up and down the back steps. So we didn't go to bed. And I remember standing in my bedroom, the big bedroom up there at the window. And of course, the searchlights were dazzling away the place. And I saw these things dropping. I didn't realise what they were at the time, but there were soldiers and civilians all cold. They were all killed. Of course, the houses have been built since then. But that, that of course, is in the archives, I think, of uh, North Town sites, you know, where they keep all the back history of the place. I know I've got a piece of paper about it, how the landmines came down. I mean, you, did, you didn't show it, but you only wished it would end. 
And then my brother, the one Stanley, he joined the Royal, he volunteered for the Royal Navy. Well, there again, there was worry over it. Um, I went to work, the other two were at school. My father was away. No, it wasn't nice. You don't, wouldn't want it again. I mean, every time there was an aeroplane, you, you assumed. I remember coming home for my lunch and I should have gone back to work when the air raids warning went. Well, I knew if I went out on the street, the wardens would chase you. So I had to stay. And there we were down in the yard. And, you know, it was quiet. Down in the cellar, the cellar door was open and we'd come up into the yard because it was quiet. Thinking, oh, it'd soon be the all clear would go. When all of a sudden, over they came. So back down and there we went and we had to wait then. And I, from the leaflets, the pieces in the paper, apparently it seems that Goring had thought that it would be easy meat up here, there would be no planes where well, there were. I mean, there was Lucas in Scotland, and then there were a number of station air places down in Yorkshire, and they all came up and they sent him flying. But you, they were out, over here, over, you know, out here in the North Sea. And you could hear them and you saw them. You got to the stage. Is that an RAF or is that a, a Nazi? <laughs> it was a Nazi when you said your prayers and hoped it'd go quick and not drop anything. <laughs> no, it wasn't nice. And then again, you four, are able to go to the sweetie shop, aren't you? Mm. And you can choose what you like. Yeah. And as much as you like. We couldn't. These are your personal coupons. And these are your coupons. You can see we've been able to have some off that one and some off this one, but none off that one. And you could only spend those. Mind the sweeties were cheaper than they are now, but that's what you had. And then of course you had one for your clothes. You couldn't just, mummy couldn't just go and buy two new pairs of shoes. Either you had to have the pair or it was you, you would have to wait another turn. And that was the same with food coupons. You had to have um, coupons for meat, bread, butter, sugar, and if some member of the family or some neighbour didn't like, didn't use sugar, she would get you, she'd let you have her sugar if you'd let like her have something that she liked and you didn't use as much of and that's how you did but you couldn't just go to Morrison's there was of course there was no Morrison's in those days but mummy couldn't go to the shops and just say well I'll have that 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 and that she couldn't go with her shopping list she had to take what she could get off her coupon you know if the shops had starch in which she didn't have to have coupons for the word got round there was starch in. Now remember if you wanted Pond's cream, well you only got it rationed. So if you went into Boots the Chemist and there was Pond's cream that day, you were lucky. But the next day you went in, there wouldn't be any, so you couldn't have any. You couldn't just go and buy your creams and all the nice things that you do today and don't think a thing about it, but not in those days. Probably it makes you appreciate the things a bit more, I don't know.
maybe. And the stamps, girls, <laughs> Kate. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear mother grumbling about having to pay for stamps. <laughs> Penny stamp, a halfpenny stamp. Eh? You know, sending Christmas cards is dear yeah, now, but I haven't got Facebook or any of those <laughs> fancy things. I think I prob I am probably would break it because I'm not handy. <laughs> I have to get my brother to take every chop off a bottle or a screw or anything because I just haven't got that knack. Mm -hmm. Never had and I still haven't. But if you ask me to add up, oh I can add up all right. How do you think um, Rockcliffe was affected in the war? Well, of course when the war was declared everything was finished. And I think if I'm right there was no school for a little while because we you know people had to get adjusted the school windows were all like the house windows all taped up with brown paper and eventually they I think they must have decided that they must do something about it so where there was children they were asked would you have them you know, for either, well, for mornings only, it was mornings only. And I do know that we had them in this house, in this room. How many came? But I mean, I think it must have been about 10, 12, 14, 16. And they came with the teacher. And then eventually, of course, as the war went on, well, you know, we sort of went back to school. But fortunately the school wasn't hit. And what is the little, where the children are, you know, the little where the ba children play today, that little... Mm -hmm. Well, that had originally been like a little ch off church. Hopefully for people that could just be round here to go to church. Well, during the war that was taken over as a mortuary. And that's where all the dead soldiers that were killed at the lamb, the, when the lamb mines dropped, that's where they were taken. And that's what that was used, unfortunately. <coughs> the schoolhouse is the same. All these houses are the same. They've never changed. The school used to go on until four o'clock in those days. 9 till 12, and then I think it was 1 till 4, if I remember rightly. No cars, get away as quick as possible. Um, well, how did you feel when the factories, like... Well, they were brought to the school, all with their labels and little bags. And then people had to go there. And I know my mother came back with two boys. And I think they were from the London area. I can't remember their names now. Needless to say, they were scared stiff. Hmm. Yeah. And their parents, well, they weren't much bothered. And eventually they did go home because by that time London had got the serious bombing had gone over and they went back there and we never heard another thing. Most of the people had somebody or other, either a girl or two girls, or, but I know we had two boys and it just somehow or it just, you know, it just, just they came, they went. And that was that. I doubt if many people, would, well, nobody around here will remember them now. But I do know we had two boys. No, they're not times you want again. Did your mum and mum or dad or aunt or um, uncle tell you any stories about World War One? Or... Yes, my father went to the war. And he served in Germany. He was in the oh, 
to do with guns, what you call machine gun corps, that was it. I've got it right now after stopping the thing. He said, you don't say these names every day. Machine gun corps, he was in that. And I know upstairs that there is a, there's letters, that, you know, I think his letters where it, when he was, um, what, you, what you call, when you're, give, when you're finished with the army, you know, you get, I know that's lying upstairs, upstairs on the bed. Um, I know there's other letters up there. I know there was a book, but I was never allowed to, to read this book and I've never done it, funny enough I've never done it since. It wasn't suitable for me to read. So that was the end of that story. My mother, she, she wasn't the eldest, she had a brother called Stanley. He went to the war and he was killed and he was killed in the Battle of Gallipoli. Broke my grandmother's heart. Then there was my mother, her sister Margaret, and her brother William, but of course they were too young to go. But her brother Stanley went, and that's from Pois, Welsh Pool. And I know there were other cousins went. Um, I know that in the First World War, that's where my mother stopped, and my aunt did as well, stopped taking sugar. Because my grandmother liked sugar, and so they gave up the sugar for her. And they never took sugar again. Whereas my father, you put two in his cup, he would then put another two in, because he thought you'd forgotten to put it in.